this will be my thoughts on Rebels Season 4, the Star Wars show. So, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this season. And yeah, I've loved every single episode of this entire show. This video will be my riffs and analysis for the season, not a review. The review itself, I'm probably going to record it as soon as I have recorded this. Honestly, by the time you see this video in the feed, there's some chance that I'm upload that I'm that I'm uploading both around the same time. So, let's Right, since I won't get into the following in every single episode section in this video, I will just briefly say every episode has great creativity and designs. The action is engaging, varied, well choreographed. I'm invested in the stories and characters. Anything I don't comment on, presume I approve of, not that this is only going to be negative. And I will be talking about the messages it communicates, in part about fascism, since Star Wars was in part about criticizing fascism from the very start. So... First episode of the season is Heroes of Mandalore Part 1. At first it seems like Ezra struggling with the jetpack would just be a silly joke, but they do get some actual tension out of it also. Like, I would have loved for them to never play it as a, a joke, to, to, for it to be at least slightly more serious, but yeah, I, I like that it did end up mattering. Really cool when Sabine leads a bunch of Mandalorians to attack the Imperial facility. Like, just, I know I'm I'm in some ways, you know I I I like the classics. The you know, holding a sword high above your head and you know charge kind of thing. That's yeah I I I like it. And Kanan wants Hera to say, I love you back over the holographic call. Very Han and Leia in Empire Strikes Back. And I appreciate that that's like a thing that, that's in more than one episode of this season. So, you know, the season opener sets it up and they keep bringing it back. I love the tense rescue. There's so many moving parts. You know, the, the multiple... Imperial vehicles and you know the people on several of the vehicles and they're trying to avoid getting shot trying to take over the vehicle just absolutely love it Sabine's dad provides some feedback on her art so it was a way for the two of them to bond helping to normalize straight cis men being creative and showing a father teen daughter relationship where they get along really well love to see it and realize Sabine's weapon is being used which brings us very nicely into episode 2, Heroes of Mandalore, part 2. I swear to you, swear to me! Oh, you did. Um, proceed. I really appreciate that Beskar being part of the Mandalorian identity is underlined. It is important to communicate to young audiences that just because something isn't a part of their own identity, it can still be an important part of someone else's. This could encourage more empathy towards trans people who just want to live the way that feels natural to them, don't want to hurt anyone, and you have a lot of people saying that they should just abandon their entire identity, that it should be made illegal. Let's see. And, you know, once again, they're not the ones grooming kids. That's people like Matt Walsh. That's why he's so adamant about making people believe that it's trans people because he feels bad about, on some, maybe does, maybe he doesn't even feel bad, but he knows that this is something that a lot of people don't like. And he has said it on tape. Now, right, and Sabine reprograms the weapon to target Imperial armor and Bo-Katan points out, that's not our way, that's their way. Really, really appreciate that because it is you know it's it's cathartic to imagine being able to to you know do to the you know if someone hurts you there's some part of you that might feel like hurting them but that's not gonna that's not gonna make things better it might feel that way but psychologically speaking it doesn't actually that brings us to episode 3 in the name of the Rebellion, part 1. Saw and Mon Mothma discuss rebel tactics, how far to go to win. I like it. You break every rule of engagement and most of the rules of attraction. 
Here I express as wanting revenge, a very realistic response. Episode 4 in the name of the Rebellion, Part 2. Saw Sabine and Ezra beat up some stormtroopers. An off-screen scream gag. Off-screen scream gag. Classic. I love it. And they find the kyber crystal that was meant for the Death Star. Just an observation, this is not a very good rescue. I hope we'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when. And Episode 5, The Occupation. Was it the Occu or the Patient? So Lethal, a familiar place to the audience, we spent a decent amount of time there earlier in the show, has now been, you know, the chunks of it have been burnt. This could really hit home for younger viewers, encouraged to empathize more with people they encounter who have had that experience, who've lost their home. It's extremely difficult to imagine, especially for a child. I will never not love puff, puffer pigs bouncing like beach balls, just like... I, it's just, I love it. And this, you know, the first time is just one. This time there's like three or four. And boom, 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 boom. Just, I, yeah, I love it. And at the bar, a bar version of the Imperial March plays amusing. And, you know, they, in Solo, they did something similar with a recruitment version of the Imperial March, which just, yeah. <laughs> It's a it's a choice, and we learn that the last last bartender was executed. The kid from the academy helps. Neither Ezra nor Sabine have money to pay for the drink. Was was Sabine annoyed that they had to pretend because like Ezra is like oh I thought you had my like he's doing a bad job you know because he's not he wasn't prepared for that you know. But Sabine is like, I don't have money. I thought you had money. Like, she, I guess she's annoyed at him for for the for this situation. Yeah, that's that's got to be what it is. And Zeb is like, I hate the sewers. The Ninja Turtles never want to share their pizza unless there are anchovies on it. Yuck. Okay, super cool voice for the black-clad trooper. Apparently, were, were those also in Rogue One? I've only watched Rogue One twice, so I don't remember everything about it yet. I love that the hatch opening gets like two or three seconds on the other side before revealing that it's Ryder. You know, I really appreciate them trusting kids to be able to handle tension in fiction. I think way too many people sell kids short when it comes to that. You know, don't show them the thing 1982, but show them stuff like this. Episode 6, Flight of the Defender. Well, I'm glad someone likes you, Ezra. I mean, it is a very large galaxy. You are bound to find someone eventually. Just don't check the fan forums. I'm kidding. Some people do quite like him. You know, it's like with, with Ahsoka Tano. Early on, everyone thought the character was really frustrating. Later on... As the character grew, the you know there was more. Yeah, people started to like the character more. One of the stormtroopers shoots at one of the loaf cats and gets the claws, and the other one gets attacked as well. He wasn't exactly trying to talk the other one out of it, so yeah, I approve. Do not hurt animals. That was also you know I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the finale when I get to it later in this video, but. I just realized I forgot to note one thing. When Rook, I think that's how you pronounce it, when he attacked the Loath Wolf, I was like, oh, you are dead. That's, nobody walks away from hurting an animal. Not in this kind of thing. And Thrawn makes another appearance. Badass as ever. He refuses to take cover and, in fact, fires his gun very accurately at the tie. And... You know, it's a it's a black tie fighter event. Ezra and Sabine fly past the two stormtroopers who are still dealing with loath cats. I hope they like sand. And the loath wolf gets up close to Sabine. Sleep. And now to ride back to Valhalla on the space coyote. If you haven't watched the recent Valhalla, it's really really good. Now, that brings us into 
the very next episode, episode 7, Kindred. Rook is a serious badass. And the good guys almost shoot Zeb. I would love if when he explained that he stole the Imperial Vessel, they would say, Oh, we knew it was you. That's why we were shooting. Very sweet when he ran Kane and finally kissed. I, I, I love love. And the Loath Wolves yet again show the connection Ezra has to nature paying off. And the you know, the love between Hera and, and Kanan, I appreciate that, you know, sometimes it is the you know, the the if we're talking cishat, sometimes it is the the woman who's a little less certain about the relationship and the man who is more certain. You know, although here it's it's more this thing of, you know, she's worried, she's scared of losing him since she's lost others. But yeah, you know, I could imagine there might be, you know, I don't know if children, but, you know, young, you know, like maybe teenagers and such watching where the, the boys would feel like, oh, it is okay for me to be really, really into her and not, you know, it doesn't have to be her who's, you know, the, the you know obviously respect boundaries and such but you know plenty of, of times it's one person falling for someone else you know not both people immediately falling for each other and yeah you know some teen girls watching it who might feel a little reluctant with a, a you know a loving relationship and it might tell them you know that's you're not there's nothing wrong with you for that. You're not going to believe this, but the mouth is actually the single least convenient orifice to drink through. And that brings us to episode 8, Crawler Commandeers. They mentioned the ore crawler has burnt a lot of the planet. Pro-nature conservation message, I approve. And the lizard is listening, or lizarding, to hook down a feeling. Do I really sound like that? That is such an old joke, but it remains a classic. And the episode also has an anti-slavery message. As I record this relatively recently, the Republicans are trying to bring back child slavery. So, yeah, it's important to continue communicating this message. Now, obviously, when this episode was first made, I, I'm sure they had no idea that that was going to happen. But, yeah, that just means it's it's even more relevant now. Love the fight between the for the foreman and Zeb. Very tense. And let's see. That brings us to episode nine. Rebel Assault. Great fight. Tighten your bolts instead of hold on tight. I like it. I appreciate that the episode has a number of seconds where we're not sure if Ezra or Hera survived the opening. Shopper saves Hera after she loses against Rook. Fortunately for her, Mart is ready to miss again. Mart manages to knock out a stormtrooper if they have a grunt a thon. What must I do? Where must I go to bust my flow? And the episode ends with Hera caught. Very cool, very tense. I really like when when stuff like this allows the bad guys to win at least temporarily. I again, I you know, a lot of kids can can handle that kind of thing. Episode 10 Jedi Knight without a K. Governor Price hasn't started asking questions. She's just torturing to inflict pain. Very honest depiction, very common motivation for torture. Kanan gave himself a shave and a haircut. And we learn that money for the Defender is currently being put towards the Death Star. Some, I've, I've seen at least one uh, person say that the, the, you know, ultimately Thrawn didn't accomplish anything. I don't know if maybe they should have made it so that he, so that it was the other way around. He was fighting to make sure that the Death Star was being funded. You know, yeah, I don't know. Use these magnetic climbers for your impossible mission. 
very funny when Hira's on truth serums, like she's drunk and she's saying unpopular truths. This is mine, so it's not really a present. Can we take it back and trade it for something else? I never crash. I have very exciting landings. Yes! Isn't flying great? <laughs> I love you. Oh, you are so dead. The governor has Imperial's fire on the fuel depots, and to think Kanan's hair had just two days left till retirement. And Kanan fights fire with telekinesis. I really appreciate how final this episode felt for him. You know, like throughout, you could tell, okay, there's a, gonna be at least one character who's not gonna live through this, and it's probably going to be Kanan. Now, I wouldn't say that I guessed that earlier in the season, but through what, you know, yeah, while watching this particular episode. Episode 11, Doom. It is impossible for me to, in any known language, express how much I love that this entire episode is the ghost crew grieving in different ways. Hira despairs, unable to come up with a plan, function, as she otherwise always can. Ezra feels lost, directionless, the way that he was before meeting the ghost crew and before uh, Kanan became his mentor. Sabine and Zeb are angry and want revenge. Zeb almost beats, beats Rook to death until Sabine stopped him, feeling that nonviolent expression is the correct way to respond, which is definitely a much healthier way. It's not, you know, for some people it's going to be a process to get to there. But, you know, don't, it's it's not about never expressing. That's that's such a toxic message in a lot of American media. It's not about not expressing how you feel about people that you have lost. It's just, you know, try to find a healthy way to express how, how you feel. And, yeah, by the end, Hera has added Kanan to the Calicuri. He will never be forgotten. All these are very natural responses to losing someone important to you. And there was a user review of this episode where someone got very, very angry. Um, so this is all caps. I'm not going to shout it, but just letting you know this. Yeah, he wrote, they wrote, How can you justify killing Kanan when there was an entire episode right after it? Basically just talking about how good Kanan was. How can you say that it was good that they did that when this episode exists? Because grieving is important. The people who matter to us continue to matter to many of us after they die. And, yeah, I, I'm not expecting this user reviewer to be watching this, but I hope one day they will understand that, despite all the media that has told them otherwise. And that brings us to episode 12, Wolves and a Door. How will we get there? We need a vehicle. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. I used to always believe that. Losing someone close to you can change everything. You know, if paintings moved when touched right, there would be way more kids in museums. Come to think of it, that's probably why they don't. And the episode ends with Ezra moving through the gateway. Excellent cliffhanger. Gotta know what happens next. And episode... 13. A World Between Wolves. I mean, worlds. This episode has what is either time travel or alternate universe access, so I'm really glad that they did at least somewhat explore the issues, at least one of the issues that that brings up. Can you save someone who has died? Though, as an artist points out, it doesn't make it completely clear if it caused a time travel paradox when um, Ahsoka was was taken to the yeah Ezra is able to save Ahsoka Tano but not Kanan very cool when the Emperor apparently voiced by Ian McDermott again attacks and they're able to escape seal the portal and that brings us to episode 14 a fool's hope writer contacts Governor Price and is like I'll give you Ezra, Sabine, the Professor, and Marianne. Incredibly tense episode. These last, you know, two or three, depending on how you count, you know, this and both parts of Family Reunion and Farewell. Incredibly tense. 
Turns out the betrayal was staged. I really appreciate that they didn't reveal to the audience until it was revealed to Governor Price. You know, he says, I don't want to go back to prison. And that is, you know, some people have done extreme things to stay out of prison, to, to not go back to prison. Loath wolves attack Imperial forces. I love it. We have to show that the Empire can be defeated. Yeah, love it. And so on Disney Plus, the the both parts of the finale just play as one long, like I think it's forty five minute chunk. I am going to be treating it as two parts. In I, I don't know if some people are watching them in two chunks. So episode fifteen, family reunion and farewell part one. And yeah, we open on Ezra talking to his parents, priming the audience for the, you know, how, how painful it is, has been to, to lose them. Since later, he, you know, I guess that is the, that's the second part? Or, ah, uh, and anyway, yeah, you know, in this or the second part, the Emperor lures him with the idea of getting them back. And they threaten the governor, and it works. You know, not crazy about that. They want them to go into the dome and evacuate? It's going to make the trip home extremely uncomfortable, but okay. Love Rook fighting the wolf. I know there's not going to be Loth Wolves in all Star Wars from from now on. I'd like there to be, but I don't think it's going to happen. So I'm glad you know, I'm glad we had it for a while. It was yeah. And Yeah, we're ISB. You're not supposed to know we're ISB. Do you always question orders? And they fall for it because fascism will not allow questioning. You know, I appreciate that to some extent this might also happen in a regular, just military. But you know, certainly, ideally, in a democracy, you would be able to go, you know, to to someone else to to see if you know if if you think that what you're being told is wrong by someone who has power over you. Like, there's you know, ideally, in a democracy, you have. There, there's things you can do to appeal that. But under fascism, nope, you don't get to, yeah. I love when they use these things against the fascists. And, you know, because Rook contacts Thrawn, they end up trapped and Thrawn fires on civilians. One last time, for old time's sake. Straight drop that beat, scratch that break. And I really appreciate that Sabine lets Ezra go. Like, for a, a second there, maybe even two or three, it looked like, you know, because she can tell. She can tell what he's thinking. And then she walks over to the others and says, listen up. You know, you wonder, oh, is she going she gonna to say Ezra is thinking of, of doing this on his own? No, she distracts them so that he can get away. And, and carried out, yeah. And, yeah, so the, the um, Thrawn says, you know, the Jedi lost, and I saw, um, I think his name is John Cam Campia, a fellow YouTuber, say, you know, how does Thrawn know about how few Jedi there are when, you know, Vader and the Emperor didn't know about Yoda and Obi-Wan. Uh, or, or, did the Emperor... And Vader certainly didn't. And, yeah, I, it's, it's true. It's, you know, it only really works if this is the first bit of Star Wars you take in that you haven't watched the original trilogy. And, and I really appreciate, you know, Ezra says, you don't deserve any of this. You just believe you can take it. You know, because with fascism, might makes right. And the Emperor in a hologram, and I I did kind of like, 
you know, um, ah, crap, I forget his name, but yeah, the important, it, um, Wedge Antilles, I think it is, you know, wakes up, Wolf, and, and Wolf is like, what? No, no, I mean, Loath Wolf. And, let's see, yeah, and, and, uh, Right, yeah, M Melchi and Zed managed to stop some stormtroopers with distractions and, yeah. Which brings us to episode 16, Family Reunion Farewell, part 2. What do you want, a thank you? And the Emperor tries luring, try, tries to get Ezra to help him by promising getting back his family. He keeps talking about opening that door. You're, you can have your old life back, your your family. What about my friends? They can come for dinner, but we don't have enough room. In the, they, they can't all sleep over. And, you know, and Ezra ends saying, I have to let, you know, I love you, I always will, but I have to let you go. And the Emperor, the, the look glitches back and forth between him and the, the robes. And then the the more like less less threatening, I should say. I, I was about to say more um, more welcoming, but it's really just less threatening. Look of the the senator robes and it's, you know, yeah, very. It's it's a new way to make a character who has been creepy for you know what forty years, you know. Yeah, make him creepy in a new way. So that's that's really cool. And yeah, you know, Ezra runs out of there, and you know, you have he's he's gonna try to break some red guys, and they actually like the moment that I saw them, you know, light up staffs. You know, I was thinking, oh, this is gonna be a challenging fight because the the red guys are usually really, you know, I I know, Praetorian guards. I like calling them the red guys. They're they're usually good fighters, you know, but it's not just like oh it'll you know it's like a I I thought oh cattle prod thing no they have telekinesis like holy crap that just like honestly I spent a lot of these last couple of episodes just like not like cheering because I gotta save my voice now that I record so many videos but like you know. Wordlessly cheering, I suppose. And yeah, he did manage to to take them out with the the force and the the force of the the blocks of um, wall, I guess. And the shield comes up just in time before Thrawn has them fire again. And Ezra and Thrawn come face to face and the space whales come back and yeah so Ezra stays with the space whales and yeah it, you know I, I thought it was a, a kind of cool way to to finish it off though um, again I think his name is John Campea he pointed out you know but the the glass is out though if they travel you know, if they go into space, which they do, presumably the, the you know, exposure will kill them. But, yeah. I don't have a counter-argument. That's a good point. And the dome top lifts off, which I guess means James Gunn took over writing and directing just briefly. Especially because it's being used to escape. And the civilians rise up to, to help keep Lethal and we skip to post Endor, which, yeah, you know, I think that is a, a good way to to do it. Like, at the end of the day, it does mean that you shouldn't watch the entirety of the finale before you've watched the original trilogy. Though I would definitely say you could make Rebel. Otherwise, you can make Rebels the first thing you watch of of Star Wars, but. I would definitely say that, you know, because at the end of the day, it does say there was a decisive victory over the Empire at Endor. 
I don't think you should know that before watching the original trilogy. But yeah, for sure, the, the you know, I think it was a good idea to have this time skip to, to say, yeah, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that it would have been good for Clone Wars to do the same thing, but I do think it really works here because this is so much about, yeah, I mean, I suppose, you know, the Clone Wars ends when the, the, yeah, the Clone Wars show ended with the end of the actual Clone War, or, yeah, fictional Clone Wars, so, whereas this is about the Rebellion, and we're mostly seeing the, like, early years of the Rebellion, and so to, to end it by telling us, yes, ultimately the Rebel Alliance defeats the evil Galactic Empire, so, yeah, I, I think that was the right choice. And Callum, Callus meets the the Lasat, so he finds out, you know, he he didn't kill all of them, which, you know, he previously said that he didn't, that he it it, you know, he was upset that he thought they were dead. And we meet Jason Derulo, yeah, Sindula, and it's one of those things. Uh, you know, some I, I know a number of of female feminists dislike this idea of you know the um, a man dies in a, a piece of fiction and don't worry he he made sure to impregnate the 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 woman he was with before dying you know some some feel that it's gender essentialism other women do really like that kind of thing you know so I'm not gonna you know, I, I don't think it's really right for me to, to come down on either side. Now I've said that both sides exist, just so so you know. But, yeah, you know, I, I hope that more people felt that it was right. I suppose if I, if I was to, to briefly, it's not the only thing. That you know, he he also got her the Calicuri back, and the you know the relationship meant a lot to her. It's not the the kind of thing where it's the only you know, and and it wasn't the kind of thing where he only got oh, he he had to redeem himself, and he only did that with his self sacrifice or through something he wrote before self sacrifice, you know. So it's. Yeah. And that is what I had. So I have some. Right. So, you know, some people really dislike that this has multiple inquisitors, even though there was the rule of two of the Sith. And so I was wondering if the show would break or prove the rule of the two. And ultimately doesn't really it doesn't completely do either I I get why some people really dislike that there are inquisitors and yeah now yeah um, the ranking whether we're talking the overall season the finale of the season openers yeah you know I think each season of Clone Wars was better than the, the one before it, and the same thing for, for this show. Now, yeah, so I have some critic quotes. One person said they didn't like the show, and, not, and they did not like the finale. And... Star Wars Rebels expands the Star Wars universe, concludes in a satisfying way, and leaves characters to be further explored in future Star Wars media. And I'm pleased with the series as a whole, despite a very choppy first season. It has a fantastic ending to Rebels in every possible way. Throughout the entire show, I've come to love the main characters, such as Ezra and Sabine. So this is a very fitting, open-ended finale for them. And I'm very excited to see where they take this series next. Thrawn was absolutely amazing. This season was a very good adversary to the determined Ghost crew. 
this season has some of the best moments of the entire show. Easily my favorite Star Wars media out there. All the characters from the show rank very highly on my favorites list, especially Ezra. Hope to see him again soon. I recommend this show to everybody who is in need of some great Star Wars content because alongside Clone Wars, this is some of the best Star Wars possible and this season solidified Ezra becoming my favorite Star Wars character too. After three seasons of these characters, you really care about what happens, and the final few episodes are Star Wars and Dave Filoni at its best. The ending leaves so much room for expansion with the search for Ezra and Thrawn, the mystery of the Purgle, the world between worlds, Jason Syndulla, and some, uh, Jason Syndulla potentially being trained in the ways of the fourth like, Force, like his father, and the world of Lyrasan and the Lasat people and other possibilities from the routes. Uh, yeah, some people really hated that the space whales were back. I, I don't know what to tell you. Some some people said there's too little death of major characters to feel serious across the four seasons. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that might have been yeah. And right, so the the yeah, so I already mentioned how I think it might be. What, what I think might be a good way to fix the fact that Thrawn doesn't really accomplish anything on the show and the the major argument against bringing him back to not accomplish something is that he's such a beloved character from the expanded universe and um, right so I think the following sometimes I do really like I well, I have his name right here his name, Cosmonaut Variety Hour. Sometimes I really like, like he just did a video talking about the Power Rangers movie, which was a lot of fun. The following is a quote from him, and I really disagree. He said, how are we supposed to care about the plan of Lethal? I mean, I'm sorry that it didn't work for Marcus personally. I felt they gave us more than enough reason to care and then he said, in Star Wars, we're not supposed to care about the individual planets. I've tried. I'm not sure I ever will understand the complaint that a new entry in a franchise tries to change things in a way that honors the values expressed in earlier entries. Like, for sure, if Star Wars was suddenly saying, genocide is good, fascism is good, that would be a betrayal. But just saying that individual planets matter, I mean, we care when Alderaan is blown up. In that movie, we don't have time to really get to know the planet and its people. This is an ongoing show, so there is time, so they do it. Like, it seems like such a... Like, you're. it's fine to not like it, but I really don't understand how you feel that it legitimately doesn't make sense to for, for a show that has the time to... Yeah, and and I do agree that it is the... I, I'm not sure there's any prior Star Wars media that really did it. Um, like, for sure, we spend a lot of time on some specific planets. You know, there's a lot of... Ah, uh, what's... Um, Luke's planet... Let's see, Luke Skywalker... Okay, that's a lot of information that isn't the information I'm looking for. Tatooine. You know, we, we spent a lot of time on Tatooine, Coruscant, you know, depending on which of the trilogies you're watching. And, yeah, I agree. We don't... I'm, I'm not sure I would say that I felt that strongly about either of them, though I agree that we've spent too much time on Tatooine across a lot of Star Wars media because nostalgia, but... Yeah, I, I, and I'm, I'm not saying that it's bad that Clone Wars didn't do it because they had so much to cover, but I do, I'm, I'm really glad that this show did, you know. So, so yeah, that is it for this one. Now let's see. I next, the next Star Wars show is Resistance. I'm probably going to do a video on it in two weeks time and yeah catch you in the review of rebels and yeah may the force be with you